It's been almost two years since this channel exclusively leaked the die sizes and even pictures of Lovelace laptop die configurations. And you could definitely say that back then I was quite critical of how NVIDIA was configuring their laptop GPUs because, well, frankly, I just thought it was dishonest to call a 128-bit card with a smaller die size than the RTX 3050 or GTX 1650 a 70-class GPU just so that you could pretend compact laptops now came with 4070 graphics included. But if I'm being honest, it wasn't just the die size or the bus width. It was also largely the total amount of VRAM these cards were coming with that were being called high-end in 2023. And I know many of you are still worried about this with Blackwell laptop GPUs because I see it in the comments all the time, people asking if the VRAM size is likely to go up this generation. And well, it turns out that today I can tell you the answer is Apparently, yes, at least for some of the models. Now, I don't feel safe sharing pictures of these dies yet, like I did last gen early on, but I do think some of the information uh, someone verbally told me about them is enough to share at this point. So I want to put this quote on screen. One of my best long-term sources on NVIDIA GPUs told me that they're conducting validation of the top laptop GB203 configuration. That is to say, not just GB203, but the top SM configured model for laptop, and that it has a around 377 millimeter square die, which is almost the same as 8103 that's used in the RTX 4090 laptops and RTX 4080 desktop GPU. So almost the same die size as the previous 103. And it comes, interestingly, with 24 gigabytes of GDDR7 over a 256-bit bus. But what's even more interesting is that this person has seen no mention of a 16 gigabyte variant of this exact configuration for laptop, which is expected to be the top configuration for laptop. And also that it's apparently targeting a late quarter one, not early, late quarter one or early quarter two 2025 launch. And so, yeah, what do I think about that? Well, the first thing I want to point out is the following. Number one, clearly just like how AMD designed Navi 33 to perfectly fit into Navi 23 designs, NVIDIA seems to be doing the same this time around with GB203. I'm sure they are making the die size almost exactly the same as the previous generation so that any laptop right now built for an RTX 4090 or 4090 laptop uh, will be able to have a drop in of the RTX 5090 laptop cards. Furthermore, the fact that the 5090 laptop GPU seems to be getting pushed back a bit, you know, maybe launching even quarter two instead of the beginning of quarter one, yeah, that tells me it is probably specifically because they've decided to wait for the three gigabyte GDDR7 modules so that they're 90 class laptop GPU can have 24 gigabytes of RAM over a 256 bit bus instead of 16 gigabytes of RAM over a 256 bit bus. And by the way, this has been backed up by an OEM contact of mine as well that told me that the professional Blackwell cards seem to be getting pushed back a bit. I think it's because a lot of them are waiting for those three gigabyte modules. Although note that I am not under the impression that the desktop RTX 5080, which would use the same die as the laptop 5090, I'm not under the impression that those are going to launch with 24 gigabyte models. They might get them eventually, but you see where I'm going with this? I think NVIDIA is launching the desktop 5080 and then 5090 at the end of this year using traditional two gigabyte modules. And then they're going to probably at CES launch two gigabyte module laptop cards, and then they'll roll out the 24 gigabyte 5090 laptop edition once the three gigabyte modules are ready. And so what does this mean for the lineup overall? Well, please keep in mind that this part here is pure speculation on my part, but I have to imagine that if at the top of the laptop lineup, they're going to have a GB203 based 24 gigabyte card called the 5090, that they're probably going to cut down 203 and then give it 16 gigabytes and that is what the 5080 will be maybe launching before the 5090 laptop edition and then below that i would expect them to use gb205 if that rumor configuration is correct i don't actually personally know myself uh, and then that will be used for a 12 gigabyte rtx 5070 laptop and then i would actually suspect that an 8 gigabyte yes 8 gigabyte unfortunately a 5060 or 5050 laptop gp will also launch in quarter one next year but then be followed up as quickly as possible once the modules are ready with a 12 gigabyte edition of the RTX 5060. So they can put a 12 gigabyte 5060 and a 128 bit packaged laptop. That is what I'm suspecting will happen. But all right, uh, you can, as usual, expect more from me about these products in the coming months. For now, I actually want to move on with AMD Zen 4 and Zen 5 supply and pricing updates that I have and what I'm hearing about Air Lake's release date. But first, an ad from a sponsor. 
This piece of content is brought to you by Notion and their new Notion AI. Unlike generic AI tools, because it's integrated into Notion, Notion AI keeps up with your Slack discussions, knows every project update that's been made by you recently, and remembers Google Slide presentations that you've uploaded. In other words, you can more easily than ever before use new AI capabilities Notion has launched to create high quality work specifically because Notion AI has all the context it needs to do the best work already for you, unlike a lot of other AI programs. Notion AI has the capabilities of an AI chatbot, writing assistant, and universal search all in one, and most importantly, it's built into your workspace already. And because of that, it saves you time and cost. For example, you can use Notion AI to connect your Slack and Google Drive to easily access information from both platforms without leaving your Notion workspace. This allows you to task your assistant with hunting for deadlines, key messages, project updates, and more, so you don't have to anymore. And, or you can also use it to revise podcast scripts, you know, I do podcasting, uh, to be rewritten in a different voice or kind of actually act like a content prep buddy before you start recording a new episode. That's what I tried to use it for and it worked pretty well. I'm really not kidding on that actually because before recording with Hardware Unboxed recently, I uploaded my broken silicon discussion document to Notion and then started acting, asking it questions. Uh, like for example, I asked it, what do you think this conversation will mostly be about? And Notion AI correctly summarized the talking points me and Steve from Hardware Unboxed would go through. Or I asked it, what topics were likely to be controversial? And it warned me that the Zen 5 launch uh, was sure to make some people type in all caps in the comment section. And actually one question that really made me consider how useful this tool really is was asking if Notion AI thought there was a favorite between AMD's 9800X3D and Intel's Aerolake 285K in terms of who would win gaming performance this fall. And it summarized that overall the market is cautiously optimistic about the 9800X3D, uh, cautious because of the recent fail of the Zen 5 launch. But then generally speaking, most gamers were uh, have mixed opinions about Arrow Lake because they thought it should be good, but Raptor Lake's issues have made people very cautious to be optimistic about anything Intel moving forward. That's really useful to me to take what I plan to talk about and ask Notion, you know, what should I be worried about and what are people talking about regarding these subjects already? Because it, it can just do it. It's like a content prep buddy. And I think it'd be really useful for you too for doing all different sorts of things. So anyways, I want to thank Notion for sponsoring this video. Please scan the QR code on screen or visit the link in the description to sign up for Notion AI today for just $10. And remember that doing so, even just clicking on that link in the description or scanning that QR code, that helps the channel a ton. So support Moore's Law is Dead by checking out Notion and their new Notion AI today. All right, so I won't waste any time on this. If you look on screen, you can see two of my best retail sources confirming to me that Zen 4 supply is starting to become incredibly constrained. Now, the first source here who works at a U.S. retailer tells me that they're finding it impossible to automate the R7 7800X3D anymore. That actually, it's starting to get a bit hard to consistently automate any Zen 4 CPU right now. They usually can within a month, but not always. And if the 7800X3D takes multiple months or they're told they may never get the RMA unless they choose some other CPU like a 7950X, which also might take weeks or like a 7900X3D, which is one that AMD has a few around because people don't really want that model. And that's just not how things used to be. Now, moving on to the second source here, this person told me when I asked them about Zen 4 supply that it was funny I should ask because just a couple weeks ago, they sent a system with a broken 7950X back to an OEM for RMA and then they were told they needed to give us them an entirely new system since they couldn't promise when they would have more Zen 4 supply. And yeah, the 7800X3D is becoming complete unobtainium. And so yeah, I think recently AMD cut off supply of Zen 4 or at least throttled it heavily in order to try and force Zen 5 to replace it as soon as possible. And this is something I actually covered extensively. It was already starting to happen in a live stream a few weeks ago. And it was also backed up by Steve of Hardware and Box when he recently came on Broken Silicon. And we shared notes on how apocalyptically bad Zen 5 sales were. So bad, at least that I am told, that some retailers and suppliers are trying to ship Zen 5 back to AMD and then that's being rejected and that AMD realizes they have a real crisis on their hands here where, yeah, they're happy if Zen 4 sells, but they have all of this inventory 
of Zen 5 not moving. That's still wasting a ton of money for them. And so I think they realize they need to do something, really anything here, to start forcing Zen 5 to replace Zen 4 as quickly as possible. Now, before you scratch out your eyes and scream that this makes AMD evil, uh, I think that we should note that Zen 5 likely costs less to produce than Zen 4, actually, at least less than initial Zen 4 production. So there's no reason that over the next few months, maybe or at least over the next year, we are going to see Zen 5 move into probably the price points of Zen 4 that you've been used to seeing a few months ago. Maybe not the most insane pricing that you've seen a month ago, but it's already kind of getting to where Zen 4 was after heavy discounts already. I mean, look at the 9600X already going at a discount at 269. I'm seeing the 9700X at 319, sometimes 330, 340, depending on the retailer. I can find the 9900X at 439 already. What is it like? over 10% off at multiple retailers, and the 9950X is already down to 599. And so, yeah, I mean, when you compare that, especially if those prices keep going down, I don't actually know that this is that big of a deal because if you were to compare like a $320 9700X to a $350 7800X 3D, unless you're only using it for gaming, that doesn't seem really like a worse choice, it's especially, you know, if you are only looking at this for gaming. I've already proved that the 9800X 3D is coming soon anyways. And if that's priced well, I don't think there's that much room to complain. Actually, on that note of 9800X 3D pricing, I do think that we should be watching the 9900X pricing very closely over the next week because if it consistently stays around $440, which it is at multiple retailers like Micro Center and Amazon, I think that might almost somewhat force AMD to price the 9800X 3D at a more aggressive 399 instead of 449. That's what the 7800X 3D launched at, of course. Although, I don't know, who knows? Maybe they won't care. Maybe they'll just price the uh, 9800X 3D as the same price as the 9900X is on the street right now. I certainly wouldn't be entirely surprised by that because it just seems like the market values an eight core V-cache the same as it does a 12 core without V-cache. But anyways, the point is, there's no doubt, AMD is cutting Zen 4 supply, so Zen 5 replaces it more easily moving forward. The fact that it's RMAs that are being affected, by the way, not just shipments, tells me that they might actually literally be not making that much Zen 4 anymore, because you'd think you'd be able to easily RMA a CPU if all they were doing was not shipping it for sale, but that's not what's happening. It's hard to RMA them, and I just don't get, again, why Zen 5 didn't come out now. Why not wait until the Zen 5 software and support was up to snuff? Why not, you know, then wait for Zen 4 to sell out and then launch Zen 5 at like 599, 449, 329, and 269 so they don't drop even lower than that, even though you didn't want them to. But I don't know. I guess that's just beating a dead horse. Once again, that's what I think AMD should have done. That's not what they did. But it looks like we're kind of going to get a deal on Zen 5 because of how much they botched the launch. Anyways, now finally moving on to Intel and the Arrow Lake release date. I've of course seen the rumors that Arrow Lake is planned to be announced in like a week from now and then launched three weeks from now. And I can tell you personally that I have documentation proving that this indeed does seem to be the plan currently. However, two things differ or are kind of new on my end. So first of all, the documentation that I have actually lists October 26th as the Arrow Lake release date, but I've, I've seen this before where some retailers have a release date that's a couple days later than seems to be the first release date. And so I could see that either being some retailers getting it later than others, or just some sort of communication. I've literally seen this before with previous Intel launches that I've covered. But really the point is that Arrow Lake launches late October, that that is the current plan. And then another unique thing I can add to this is that I saw that Z890 motherboards should at minimum be shipping in the middle of the month. And it seems like they might even arrive at some retailers in the middle of the month. I don't know what the point really would be in selling Z890 early because that's LGA 1851. So it's not like you can put existing CPUs into it, but I just thought people should know that that seems to be well ahead of schedule to arrive at Arrow Lake's launch or maybe even before it. And yeah, that was just a small update on Arrow Lake's release date. I can confirm that what's being reported is generally what I'm seeing and hearing. And that is actually then going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, please remember to comment below for the algorithm, to like it, to share it, and to subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss the other upcoming leaks from this channel. You're not going to want to. And of course, if you have even an extra $2 a month, please support Moore's Law is Dead 
on Patreon. You'll get access to the Discord to discuss videos like this with me and a community of thousands of people right after they come out. You'll get access to a catalog of hundreds of Dive Shrink episodes. One's coming out right after this that has fan submissions in it influencing the conversation they're free they have no ads always for uh patreon members and then of course you know you can ask us questions like hardware and box that was just on and so on and so forth there's tons of extra content there and we cannot do this without our patrons without that steady supply of income that isn't beholden to sponsors or whatever's going on with youtube it would be much much harder for me dan gerard and carver to do our job so please support us there if you have that extra money but no matter what if you made it this far in the video at a minimum thank you for watching <laughs>